my name is Bob Baumgart. I am vice chair for the uh, Waukee Area Chamber of Commerce. I am a liaison on the Government Affairs Committee as well. Uh, I also own a local business here, Homestead Senior Care. So I'd like to thank uh, everybody here for joining us tonight uh, on behalf of the chamber and, and all the members here. We're, we're excited to have everybody here from the candidates to all of you attending. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity to host this event and uh, encourage everyone to go out in November and vote. Exercise that uh, constitutional right we all have. Uh, the, the chamber is, uh, provides over 300 members with the opportunities and resources to engage and network with other businesses and, and to enhance the financial and uh, professional development of the Waukee business community. Uh, we're excited to be able to host this again. Um, and we thank everybody for coming. The, uh, the chamber would also like to thank Natasha for once again being willing, willing to record this. She'll be recording it, and so everybody knows it will be posted onto our uh, Facebook page and web page, so uh, you can go back and review it for your pleasure here many, many times uh, over the next few weeks, if you'd like. Um, and I think uh, maybe I should run down. We've got, we've got six candidates up here for differing positions. We only have an hour, so we're going to try to run through as many questions as we can, but you can see with six people and uh, 90 seconds or so per answer, we're not going to get to a whole lot of questions, so we'll try to get to everybody's question if possible. Um, and so right now, I think we'll start with a quick introduction, and we'll start here with Ms. Clark and work our way around this way. Hi. Well, I just want to first off thank the Chamber for hosting this event. It is a fantastic turnout, so thank you all for also being engaged in this process. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Courtney Clark, and like most people, I'm a lot of things. Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, I am a wife and a mom of four amazing kids. I mean, I'm a little biased, but I think they're amazing. Um, I'm a business leader. I am part of the executive committee of an institutional investment management firm. And in that role, I oversee sales, marketing, client service, uh, also strategic planning and strategic partnerships. And, and so I've had a lot of experience across that. In that role, I also work with CFOs of corporations and of public entities on their finances. So I'm very well versed in terms of the financial structure of entities like Waukee and, um, and how that works. I'm a board member and a volunteer. My husband and I volunteer for a number of different organizations. Uh, everything from child welfare organizations to arts councils to um, job development groups. And we're people that really feel called to serve here in the community and to give back. Um, I'm incredibly dedicated and a very hard worker. And I have a true heart for helping people. At the end of the day, I also get things done. It's what I'm known for in my professional career. It's what I'm known for in my circles, and, and I bring that here as well. <laughs> I'm running for mayor uh, for a lot of reasons. One, because I love this city. We love living here. We love raising our family here. And because I want to see it be a strong community for all families. We've had just a tremendous amount of growth and success here in Waukee, and we obviously want that to continue. But we also want to be a leader in the metro area. And I believe that my skill set, my leadership experience, my financial and background, I'm getting the, the sign, uh, can help bring that, uh, bring uh, success to Waukee's goals. So. Hi, good evening. My name is Shelly Hughes. Um, I want to thank the, the Chamber of Commerce for organizing this forum, and I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to express what an honor it's been to serve the citizens of Waukee these last eight years on city council. Um, time surely flies when you're having fun and it's flown by for me. My husband Brian and I and our two boys call Waukee home. Um, on any given day, you can usually find one of us out in the community um, in some manner, either at a chamber, parks, a rotary event, at the library, or at one of the many school events um, the Waukee School District keeps our sophomore and sixth grader busy with. Um, a little over nine years ago, my neighborhood had a rezoning issue arise that, and that issue opened my eyes as to just how much my city government plays a part, a daily part in my family's life. And I knew then that I had to get involved um, to be a part of it, and I've been very privileged to be your council person for the last eight years. The experience and knowledge and history I've gained is invaluable. 
Um, although I came in when Waukee was already in a period of rapid growth, we've added almost 10,000 people since I was first elected. That's 10,000 homes, new streets, traffic signals, you know, medical clinics, parks, grocery stores, nail salons, as I'm sure many of you have seen. Um, but it's also, you know, it's also, um, it's safe public safety, infrastructure, um, all of this while not only keeping our tax rate steady, but actually lowering it. Um, the biggest goal I've set for my own governance is to re retain Waukee's hometown feeling. I did not grow up here. I grew up in a very rural area in Northeast Iowa, but this is my boy's hometown. And um, I can't imagine a greater challenge and responsibility than making their hometown the most successful, safe, and desirable place I can. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ankush Bhatia. Um, welcome to hear us for today, and thank you for joining here. I would like to also thank the Chamber uh, for hosting us today at this wonderful event and a wonderful uh, place over here. I've been uh, living in Waukee since 2005. Me, my wife, and my son, who is a sophomore, um, I've been calling Waukee our home. I like this place so much that after I sold our first house, I still built a second house in Waukee. So that is how much I love Waukee on it. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to uh, my education-wise, I'm a, a bachelor's in uh, economics and accounting, so I understand the financing model of things and how things work, and also have a master's in computers and business administration. So I understand technology as well as how do we manage business uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I'm running for Waukee City Council uh, purely because I think this is a very quickly and rapidly growing uh, city. And we need to think it more strategically so that we can evolve and become the future uh, in which our kids, our future generations can live and call home. Right now I see that we are doing things wherein they learn and they go out and then the next generation comes in from outside. So we need to build the community in a way wherein we could add that value so that they can stay here, they can grow here, and this is the one that I want it to be uh, as one of the top um, cities in the U.S. So that is my goal. How do we do it? We'll have to work on it. We'll have to figure out a measure. We have to think how we want to do it, and we have to take it from there, which means strategic thinking, strategic growth and planning, and implementing and staying true to ourselves. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Christine Crone. And when I say that, I hear my mom's voice, so I usually go by Chris. <laughs> my family and I have been here in Milwaukee for 19 years. Before that, I lived over in Guthrie County and worked in West Des Moines. So since, I'm going to age myself, 1988, I've been driving this way and watching the growth has just been tremendous. My family, and I, I will include my family in a lot of this, because if I volunteer for something, they know that it, it means the entire group. My husband's like, yeah, it does. <laughs> I have a marketing and event background. I love being creative. Right now, I'm employed with the Iowa Association of Electric Co-ops. There, I'm in charge of the Iowa employees, their health care, their life insurance, and their pension benefits. Uh, so I work with people's money. I have their confidence that I'm not, you know, with all the HIPAA rules I follow. I absolutely love supporting Waukee. We chose to come here in, in 19 years ago and, and never looked back. I think I'm going to be the 80-year-old woman at all of the football games cheering on those <laughs> students. That's just a passion of mine, and that the school has just been wonderful to us. It's my hope that my 7-year-old grandson, when it's time for him to graduate college, that Waukee is still the type of town that he wants to plant his roots and grow his have his children grow in. Um, Serving the community is just huge, huge, huge to me. For the past 13 years, I have served in one form or the other. I've been a Girl Scout leader. I was a member of the RAGBRAI organization committee. Um, currently, I've been on the park board for five years. I'm in the second year of being the president there. I volunteer as much as I can through the YMCA and every nonprofit organization I can get my hands on. 
Um, you know, I didn't set out to run for city council. I set out to make a difference in the community. And this just seems like the next logical step in the road to how I can serve you guys. Thanks, Chris. Good evening, I'm Larry Lyon. I'm a self-employed remodeling contractor and small business owner here in Waukee, and I currently sit, serve on the Waukee City Council, and I sit right here, so I feel very comfortable this evening. <laughs> um, uh, thanks again to the Chamber, and thank you for coming out this evening to see this. Uh, thanks to my wife, Lori, a current Waukee School Board member, and uh, Lori's a walk, uh, reading recovery uh, teacher leader in the Des Moines School District, and, and uh, appreciate her guidance and, and also that of our three sons. We moved here in 1996. We moved on to Boone Drive, which is an extension of 156th Street. When we moved in, the only thing there was overhead door company. We were moving into the country. That's why we moved there. And we heard that Waukee had a pretty good school district. Uh, we should have noticed that the brand new school across the street was a good sign that there was gonna be some expansion coming our way and it didn't take but a year for the cornfield and the tree farm to go away. Uh, I believe that in a philosophy that my dad had. He said that community service is the rent we, we pay for space on the earth. So it was important for I and Lori to get involved in community service in this, com in this, in this community. We at the time when we moved here had less than 5,000 residents and, and less than 1,000 kids in the school district. The growth has just been phenomenal. But this community service that I talked about is very important to us and I'm pleased to serve. I started uh, my first term on city council in 1998 to fill the role, the, the, the unfinished uh, portion of a term from a gentleman who was transferred out of the area. Uh, then after that, I moved uh, on to school board for 11 years and had a positive, great experience there. I, I like to consider myself a lifelong learner. And after that, came back to city council. Living here is sort of like building a new town from scratch. The, I think we all know how lucky we really are. So when I moved here and I ran for city council the first time, I was looked at with a little bit of suspicion because people weren't sure if they could trust me. Now I'm the old guy and I have the history and it's the history that I want to help you carry forward if you elect me again to another term on city council. Thank you. Hi, I'm, can you hear me? Closer. Hi, I'm uh, Ben Sinclair. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight and thank the chamber for putting this on. Um, give you a little background about myself. Uh, I was born in West Des Moines, and uh, prior to living in Waukee, we lived in Beaverdale. And uh, so about 10 years ago, I uh, was out of town, and uh, my wife uh, went house shopping without me. And when I, when I came home, she said, we're moving to Waukee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a little apprehensive at first, uh, but as soon as we moved in, I knew I was home. Um, I've never had uh, better neighbors or f felt more part of a community uh, than I do here in Waukee. Um, and we now have a seven-year-old daughter who's, of course, in Waukee schools, and uh, we all love living here. Um, but uh, I'm a software developer, and uh, mainly I uh, build systems to help my clients do uh, digital marketing work. And uh, I also help uh, startups build uh, hardware and software prototypes, uh, some of them here in Waukee, actually. And uh, I'm also uh, fairly active in the kind of Des Moines area startup community and uh, working on a couple other startups uh, with uh, somebody else I just saw walk in. So, um, but I'm running because I want to help, and I love Waukee, and uh, I have the time to uh, make city council priority. I uh, like to think I'm approachable, and I'm, I'm ready to listen, and uh, I'd like to take a deep dive into any issue or idea uh, that you may have. Um, so uh, I also want to say, uh, you know, over the years, you know, uh, I've seen Waukee uh, grow a lot, and uh, when I was little, my mom used to take us from West Des Moines all the way out to Waukee <laughs> to go to Alice's Spaghetti Land, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I wish it was still here. But uh, you know, I've seen Waukee grow a lot since then, from a, a small town to a big part of the metro. And uh, I want to make sure that uh, that community feel that we have uh, continues as we grow. Um, and uh, it's, uh, thanks. You know, I'm looking forward to the questions. And because uh, you know, I think you know, some of this, it's not so much about me, but it's about what you want for Waukee. Um, so thank you. Thank you guys all for your comments there. I, uh, I need to apologize to everybody in the audience. I should not assume you know who's sitting where and what they're running for. I did not mention that. So as we are sitting looking at them, the two candidates on the left, Ms. Clark and Ms. Hughes, are running for mayor. The four candidates on the right, Mr. Bahati, Ms. Crone, Mr. Lyon, and Mr. Sinclair are running for city council. So I apologize for not making that clear to anybody that may not have known who is sitting where and, and what they're running for. Uh, in the effort to provide 
an equitable distribution of questions. We're gonna kind of walk down the line so everybody has a chance to be first and then last because we're gonna ask everybody the same question. So um, since Ms. Clark went first, we're gonna have Ms. Hughes go next with the first question. And um, something that everyone mentioned was growth. Um, so how do you balance growth maintaining our tax levy, as you mentioned, and maintaining uh, the excellent service that's been provided by the city of Waukee for all these years? Planning, lots and lots of planning. We, we're constantly, um, we're constantly, Waukee is changing. Um, if there's one thing I hear constantly in every conversation is either how much Waukee has changed or how it's about to change. Um, Change is just constant here. That's why we have to always think forward what's going to happen this year, what's going to happen in five years, in 10 years, in 40 years. Um, we have to plan, you know, aggressively in certain areas, but conservatively in our finances. And we have amazing staff who do an excellent job of, of weighing out where, where we can pl spend the money. Um, and as, as a council person, um, I think we've, we have strategic planning every year that we, we really decide what our wants and needs are. Um, but it's, it's a balance between residents and business owners and developers. And you want to try to make everyone happy because everyone has to pay taxes. And, but then you have to keep up with infrastructure. And I know one of our, um, one of our, I guess, issues right now, opportunities, is neighborhood traffic. A lot of our roads that hadn't been open for years and years are now thoroughfares, and it's, it's a problem that we're, we're looking at very seriously. So uh, going back to the planning aspect of things, it not only requires planning, but strategic thinking as well. So when you truly look at it from that perspective, uh, like we have schools, what did we do? We created our first school, then we found out, oh, it ran out of space. So we had to build another school. We found that we'll close one school, but we couldn't because we built another school, but found out the next generation coming in or the next class coming in was so huge that we had to open an old school again. So that is a common thing. So if you do not have a strategic thinking and planning mixed together, it is going to be very difficult to manage the growth and uh, maintaining the tax levels and also providing the excellent services. So in my opinion, what I will be bringing to the table is that strategic thinking as to how we want to approach the growth, the incoming P uh, st uh, students, not only that, the incoming residents, and how do we grow from there. So that is where it is, attracting industries by providing lower taxes and giving them opportunities to grow, providing incentives who are locally here so that they can expand and hire more people. So all this goes together, and that is what I would be working towards. And not all the ideas will be coming to me. I'll be reaching out to all of you over here and asking the question, what do we think we need to do so that we can keep growing in a strategic way and then come back to it and implement or help implement within the city council? So it's not just ideas coming from me. It is coming from all of you. So you'll be hearing from me a lot. You will have my contact. We'll have more conversations. And from there, we will come back in and we'll take those feedback and start implementing it by passing some uh, things over here in the city council. Thank you. Would you mind repeating your question? Yeah, everybody mentioned growth. So how do you balance the growth, our tax levy, and providing excellent service to the residents as we've done so in the past? Well, I am not currently on the board, so I do, or council, so I do have a lot to learn. But I, I do know that in 2017, we just, we lowered the, the property taxes and before that, they had remained steady for, for several, several years. And I think we owe a lot of that to Apple coming into town, the one cent sales tax. I know that's just helped tremendously. I'm on the parks board, so I've seen this past year with the growth of how many <coughs> parks we've been able to complete because of that one cent sales tax. 
that was passed. Um, so I really, as fast as we're growing and the, the great things that are coming to this community, I don't see, you know, if we're talking property taxes, I don't see a concern there for, for the near future. I know that we need to maintain our great service through continued excellent leadership. Um, and keeping up with the growth, the quality of businesses that we bring into the community, I feel like the, the council needs to monitor that. Um, we need to continue to promote our local businesses, and we need to make sure that we're supporting our community and economic development department. It's part of uh, being on the council is you need to support the staff that you've hired. And I really think to continue our growth, we need to make sure that we're marketing Waukee to businesses across the nation. All good ideas. Let's uh, expand the council to seven members. I think we'll be in, we'll be in great shape with some good <laughs> ideas here. Um, <clears throat> I've heard so many great ideas. But let, me, let me try to maybe f flesh this out for you a little bit and give you some more background. Uh, Shelley talked about uh, strategic planning. Those of us on the council, the mayor, uh, others, we, we dedicate two full days away from our jobs in the spring for a strategic, a strategic planning session. It is a painstaking process, I don't mind telling you, because we come in with 50 or 60 great ideas, and after the second day is over, we end up with about 8 to 10 that we can actually implement. Uh, here's the issue. We're growing so fast, we don't have all the tax revenue to do all the great things we want to do. That's why uh, if you want to learn more about ta uh, tax increment financing, uh, don't ask me about it because it's awful dang complicated, but there are people out there who are experts at it. What I can tell you is TIF is extremely important to our community. Without it, we can't finance some of the things that we need. We all want great amenities, right? We want pools, we want splash pads, we want recreational complexes, and we want streets without potholes. But without TIF, we can't do that. How else do we plan strategically and offer great services? We go to other communities who are also successful. When we find out what they do, let's not reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. A couple of us went to Minnesota last week to find a community who does that. Um, boy, that goes fast. Is that it? That's it. i got to stop there. <laughs> well, the, uh, the question was, how do we grow and maintain the uh, same tax rates and provide great services. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, I think Waukee's in a, in a great position, you know, if you just, you know, look at, you know, the area like the Kettlestone area and just, you know, up and down Grand Prairie, I, I think we're going to, you know, we're, we're right where we're going to get all that commercial development and ex increase that tax base. And, and also with, you know, with Apple and uh, uh, and everything else, I, I it's, it's, it's hard going second to last because you kind of just want to echo everything. <laughs> but uh, I, I really don't see us in, in a position uh, in the near future where, you know, we won't have the tax base to do what we need to do. And, uh, you know, and you were mentioning, you know, TIF, and I, I, I think sometimes people have trouble with that in, in other areas. But, you know, with the way we're growing, I don't think of that as an issue at all. I think that's, you know, an important tool that we have um, that some, some other cities, the way they're growing, maybe wouldn't want to implement. But I... I I think we're on, on the right track, really, so. All right. Um, so absolutely, I'm, I'm going to agree with a lot of what has been said, but I think at the end of the day, how you balance and how you plan and how you be strategic is knowing where you're going in the first place. Um, I think 15 years ago, people didn't recognize necessarily how fast we were going to grow here as a community, and it took, um, it took some of that growth and that effort to really start to understand, wait, we need to step back and say where are we headed. Now we've, we know. We've done the population studies. We've done the housing studies. We know where we're going to end up as a community in terms of the next 20 years, what that looks like. And so we've had to, we've already been strategic about um, our comprehensive plan and understanding what is our land use and how are we going to intermix, obviously, commercial and residential and, and other aspects of our community. As Larry mentioned, we are very strategic in terms of our planning process every year, and we don't have the tax base to do everything we want, that is for sure. But um, we know that when we look out and we have those combinations of things that we're trying to do, that at the end of the day, all of us want Waukee to be the place that's going to attract high-quality jobs, high-quality businesses, 
families, and that we're going to provide that quality of life. So with that in mind, if we have that common vision as a group, we can say, what does that look like at the ending point? And then what are the incremental steps we need to take to get there? And one note on TIF, absolutely right. We have the tax base and we have TIF, but we've also had to lobby pretty hard at the state legislature to make sure they don't um, repeal that too. So that's been another component of making sure our finances stay, stay steady. Great, thank you guys all for, for your answers there. Uh, we'll move on to Mr. Bahadi. Um, for the question, the question for everybody will be to your respective position that you're, you're, you're uh, campaigning for. What do you believe are the top responsibilities that come with that position? The top things that come to my man, uh, mind is that we need to plan for the city to grow where our residents are uh, safe, they have the security, and they have the means to feel connected to the community. And that is only going to be possible if we grow in a strategic way, thinking in the right direction, and giving our kids the opportunities to learn not only from the education aspect of things, but from skill set aspect of things. We have our students learning, but their skill sets are not up to the mark that they can go out and grow and become entrepreneurs or bring value. We need to think outside of the box and give them the opportunity so that they can steer in life. If you truly look at it, the latest report that came out by 2015, 2050, we will have skill shortage, not resource shortage, but skill shortage to a certain extent that <clears throat> we'll have 20 million jobs that are lying on the table and will not have any skills to fill them up. So we need to educate, we need to learn, we need to adapt, and that is what we need to do to be competitive in the market. Thank you. As far as the roles of a city council, Larry, it's not fair. You're going to be able to answer this one a lot easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like there are several roles. Uh, you're responsible for the legislative function and, and the vision of the city. This includes reviewing and approving the annual budget, setting and monitoring policies for the city, approving rezoning requests, and you could just go on and on. I feel that it is the duty of the council to make sure that we have the correct staff in the city positions and that that staff has the education and training that they need and the resources that they need for whatever their position is. Um, we also need to exhibit responsible debt practices. It's also the job of the council, I feel, to engage with the residents to help create a great community. We need to talk with them and listen to them as much as possible. We need to not only, we need to just, we need to hear their needs and know what it is they're looking for. And in going out and doing some campaigning, I've, I was kind of shocked to find that they, they don't know how to approach council members or city employees. And I was just kind of blown away. I guess I didn't just talk to anyone, but mm -hmm. I really want to help the community know how to reach out for what they need. And then I'm going to hear their needs, and I want to educate the community, too, on how and why it is we make the decisions that we do. You're right, Chris. I got a little bit of an unfair advantage here. So I'm going to make a couple quick com comments and then back up just a little bit. I, I see top responsibilities in city council as being governance and oversight and not micromanagement, period. I'll stop right there. Mm -hmm. I want to say I think it's great that there are four city council candidates. I was saying earlier before the before we got started that there has been times, Shelley, you'll remember this, where we had to go out and beat the bush just, <laughs> bushes to scrap a couple people to fill these seats. It's great to see this young professional talent step forward and get involved, and I really appreciate that. I want to go back and talk to you about TIF for a second. We have $1.2 billion of valuation in this community. $1.2 billion. When we moved to town, we, Bill, will remember when we talked about the University Avenue trunk sewer. We were a small town. There was, the city staff was about four people, 
and we rolled the dice and we said, if we build a sewer and extend a sewer out here, I think we can get people to move out here. And they did, <laughs> and they never stopped coming. We have to continue to do that in order to, be, uh, to become successful and do the things that we want to do here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the question again was, uh, you know, what is the role of, uh, and maybe, maybe yeah, repeat it for me. As, um, for your, the position you're running for, what are your, what do you believe are the top responsibilities that come sure. with that role? Well, I'm running for city council. Uh, so, uh, you know, the technical responsibilities, you know, of course, are, you know, setting the agenda and the vision and, uh, you know, doing the oversight and making sure that uh, that actually happens. Um, but, uh, again, I find myself echoing some other people. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to bring is, is that transparency and openness uh, and approachability. Uh, again, you know, like, like you said, uh, I've been talking to a lot of people as I've been uh, starting this process, and very few people know what the city council does. I mean, you, you can ask them, you know, name five things that they've done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, pe people don't, don't uh, reach out and, and, and approach uh, the council, I don't think. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, make us more approachable, more transparent, and kind of get the word out what we do and, and listen to everybody. Well, I'm, I'm running for mayor, but the role of this entire body is really to set policy that then staff carries out and is empowered to do, and also um, to provide that strategic leadership as well as oversight and governance. In terms of specifics for this role, I think absolutely uh, strategic leadership and really understanding and having a good grasp on where exactly we need to go as a community and being able to communicate that broadly across all different stakeholders and uh, neighboring communities, interested parties. Um, conservative finance, uh, I, I would say, I think the staff gets a little tired of me actually saying, but what's our <laughs> worst case scenario? <laughs> because I am somebody that uh, I, I'm in investment management. I worked through the 2008 crisis. I worked through the housing market crash. I understand that uh, not everything is always rosy. And so as I look forward, I want to make sure that we're planning based on what we actually have today and what we know is going to come to fruition, that we're not maybe um, stepping outside of those bounds. And then representing Waukee regionally is the third aspect. Waukee is no longer kind of an island in Dallas County. If you look at our borders, we are completely intermixed with our neighboring cities, and we're part of the Greater Des Moines Partnership, the Dallas, uh, Dallas County bodies, in a number of ways. We have to work with our neighbors and really come up with strategic solutions that cross the region. Okay, I am also running for mayor, and um, having been on the council for a number of years, um, you know, the council really makes the policy our our amazing staff carries out mm -hmm. the policy that the council sets into place. And, and I really believe that, that what it comes down to is, is that the mayor is mostly responsible for relationships and advocating for the city of Waukee, um, whether it's with other cities or in the region or in our state government. Um, it's the mayor is the cheerleader for the city. Um, and the connector, making the connections. Also, the relationships within the city, with the Chamber of Commerce, with the school district, um, those relationships are key. Communication is key. Um, and a mayor needs to show passion for this city all the time, which my kids can attest to, that I show passion for every new signal light there is. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've got the time to dedicate to this position. I've been fortunate enough to be home with our boys and raise our boys and I'm, I've got the passion and the skills for Waukee and I've got the benefit of having the time to dedicate for this, to this city what it needs and the person it needs. And, you know, we, Waukee demands that, that kind of passion and it's, it's that wonderful of a city. Thank you, guys. Thank you all there for, the, for those answers. 
we're, we're quickly blowing through our time, as, as I mentioned. So I want to get to some of the audience's questions quick here as we go through. So yeah. Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Crone, you'll get the first one for the audience. It's a two-part question for everyone. <laughs> it's the first one's uh, pretty straightforward, but two parts here. Why should I vote for you? <laughs> what are two main objectives you have as mayor or city council member? Why you should vote for me? I am not good at about talking about myself, but I'm going to have to. I have a tremendous work ethic. I don't like to miss work. On the Parks Board, I've been on it for going on five years. I think I've missed one meeting. I want to bring that ethic to the City Council. If you see my family, we are out there at Chamber events. I don't even own a business, but I like being at your Chamber events. We are out there at football games. We are everywhere in this community. I am going to work hard for you guys. Um, passion, I have passion too. And I just, I could just go on and on by why you should vote for me. Um, like I said, I didn't plan on running for city council, but because I am so devoted to this community and serving the people, I'm a great leader. I'm a servant leader. And this is the next logical step on my route to serving the community. And the second part was two objectives. Um, in this past year, I've gotten a chance to work with city officials, uh, state government, and federal government officials on fair and affordable housing for Waukee. That's something I'm very passionate about and want to continue. Also, the safety of the city is its very important to me and my family, and I want to make sure that those people, we have enough people, they have the equipment they need and the continued education that they need. Um, why should you vote for me? I, I, first of all, I think I hit it earlier. I want to give back to this community that's given so much to me and my family. We are truly blessed to have landed here and truly blessed to, to have, have uh, been given so much. Uh, the second reason is I believe now that at my age I'm probably the family historian. Um, uh, I think that I have what the corporate types call the institutional knowledge of where we've been. Where we've been, oh, while that's been a great ride and we've accomplished an awful lot, we've got a lot to get done yet, and I'm happy to bring the knowledge and the history uh, forward. Two objectives. I have one objective, and my fellow city council friends uh, uh, ribbed me about it. I call it our moonshot pro. I said, what's, what's our moonshot going to be? Our last moonshot was the Grand Prairie Parkway interchange. Our current moonshot program is the city school recreational complex that's under construction. And by the way, if you have to get a chance to get out and see that, you ought to see the hole in the ground of the football stadium is going to be. It's huge. <laughs> We're going to have a fishing pier. We're going to have a big lake. We're going to have a great recreational complex. Uh, and this is, the, this is the thing we've really been waiting for from a quality of life and amenity uh, perspective. Going forward, what's the next moonshot going to be? I think it's going to be our civic campus project. The city owns about 240 acres on um, the south side of town, just west of Sugar Creek Golf Course. We have an opportunity to do some really cool stuff there, and we're going to start planning for that in about two years. So I'm really excited to see what that's going to look like. Okay, um, so why should you vote for me? Um, well, I, I love Waukee. I mean, that's kind of the, the basic part of it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine living anywhere else at this point. Um, I, we thought about, about moving uh, a little while ago, but it was, you know, to one street over. <laughs> so uh, we didn't, though. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the other uh, big uh, things I can offer is that, uh, you know, uh, being a business owner and uh, somebody with a really flexible schedule, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be available. I'm going to be able to dedicate the time that uh, the position needs. Um, and I, I'm out in Waukee all day. So, you know, I'll be here for everybody. Um, two uh, objectives. Uh, there's, I'm kind of basing some of my objectives uh, on, on just what I've learned from talking to people. And the number one thing that all my neighbors and everybody I've talked to uh, asked about is, is traffic safety, neighborhood traffic safety specifically. Um, and I've done quite a bit of research and you know traffic calming measures and things like that and um, talking to some other people uh, th there's a lot we can do there um, I think there's some things we haven't tried yet um, there's also some things that people tell me they want like speed bumps uh, that uh, just uh, nobody really wants them they, they 
there's issues with doing that. But uh, the, the other thing, um, and I'm running out of time here, is uh, you know maintaining that, that small town feel, the community aspect that we all have and enjoy. Um, I've got thoughts on that, but I'm out of time. <laughs> So uh, why you should vote for me, one, uh, I already mentioned it, we're passionate about serving. We are truly people who feel called to serve and want to give back. Um, uh, two, my leadership experience. I don't know how many people know this, but uh, mayor is not a full-time position. It is a part-time position because we have a full-time city staff and we under a city administrator form of government and they're dedicated to running. So our job is empowering them to actually carry out the policy and execute, not in micromanaging from that perspective. And then my financial background, just in terms of understanding the complexities of what it takes to run a city like Waukee is really important. Two main objectives. The first, I mentioned regional leadership. Uh, I've been out in the community a lot, but I've also been active regionally just this week uh, here in Waukee. I volunteered and served Sunday morning in the rain in Midwest Country Estates. Uh, Monday night, I was at a Capitol Crossroads meeting with the rest of Polk County and uh, Des Moines area learning about workforce housing. Last night, I was at a Dallas County Development Alliance meeting. I think regional leadership being active and engaged beyond our boundaries is incredibly important. Um, and then my second objective is housing and job opportunities. We've had a lot of businesses the last couple of years that have not been able to open on time because they do not have the staff available. We have housing needs and we have transportation needs and we need to find ways to bring those things together. Okay, um, why should you vote for me? Um, because I have the most experience, because um, my family and I are, are at, I feel like we're right in the middle of the heartbeat of this city. My kids are in school here. Um, we're, we're involved in, in every aspect of this city. And, and my passion and my dedication have shown the last eight years. And I, I feel it's, it's time for me to serve in, in the next position and it's time for someone else to take over my city council seat because I also believe in term limits. Um, and I'll lead without prejudice. I'll be honest and I'll lead with integrity and I won't treat you any different than you and, and or you or you. That's just how it needs to be. Um, the objectives, as Courtney mentioned, affordable housing, whether that's workforce housing or subsidized housing or senior housing. That's a, a huge, huge topic right now. Um, employees and transportation, getting employees to these jobs um, and traffic calming. That's what we hear probably the most of. Um, but a second objective is that it's not about me. It's, it's about the residents and it's about the stakeholders and the people who are investing in our community. And that's really who it needs to be about. Um, I'll, I'll do my best at the relationships and, and doing my part, but it's really about listening to the people. Okay, why should you vote for me? Uh, as I was mentioning earlier as well, uh, we need someone who can think strategically. In my current job that I do, I'm in an information technology field, and my role is to strategically think on the business needs and give solutions that can solve business problems. That is my current role in my current job. I think that is where is my plus point over here as well. As an outsider coming in, shining a light in a tunnel and figuring out ways to solve for it. And it's called as an out of box thinking. So we are complacent, yes. They are learned, they are all here, they have done this but not shining the light in the right spot, you might not see some of the opportunities that are still lying under the table. So I'm here who is a strategic thinker, who is a hard worker, who is an out-of-box thinker, who believes in uh, servant leadership style, which was mentioned over here right as well. So uh, because I'm here for you and it's not the other way around. If you need to reach me, you can reach me. I'll be approachable and reachable at all times. Having said that, what are my two things? I call them North Star things. First, 
growth which balances the quality of life and improves safety and security for our citizens. That is my first goal. The second goal is become a hub where students can be skilled or equipped enough with not only just the, what he call as the degree aspect of things, but have the necessary skill set that will address the skill shortages that we're going to see in the near future. Thank you. Thank you guys, thank you all for your answers there. I would love to get a chance for everybody for, to be first and to be last in this thing, but we're blowing through time, so I'm gonna keep asking them until you guys tell me to stop. I hope that's okay <laughs> with everyone. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lyons, uh, the next question is, uh, for everyone here, but starting with you, tell us about the strength of your relationship with Waukee Community Schools and the importance of the value you put on a city slash school district relationship moving forward. Oh, I think I have an unfair advantage there too. So, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, um, like I said earlier, uh, you know, I, I have a seven-year-old in uh, Waukee Schools, which uh, makes her in second grade. Um, so, you know. I've got three years worth of uh, uh, student experience with Waukee Schools, but uh, you know, with, with all the uh, you know the things that have happened with the, the the school district in the past you know year, so we all you know know about that stuff. Um, you know, I, I know that the the council and the, the rest of the city and the school board, you know, they kind of operate kind of in their kind of silos to some extent. Um, if anything, I, I wouldn't mind exploring you know kind of how that relationship works and if there's maybe potential for a little more nudging or oversight from the city council side of things or the city side of things. Uh, but that's something I, I would have to uh, look into. Um, so thank you. Okay. Um, so we are blessed with amazing schools here in Waukee. In fact, it's, it's the primary reason why people move to Waukee. So in terms of really making sure that we're supporting them as much as we can, it's absolutely critical. Now, we've partnered with them on a number of major projects and clearly we need to work with them as we plan strategically, as we mentioned. We need to work with them in understanding what their expectations for growth and student population base and all of those things are. And then we need to make sure that they understand how we're contributing on our side, the, the streets and the infrastructure that we're helping build to make those things a reality. Um, we've, as I mentioned, we've already partnered on a number of things. Uh, Larry mentioned current moonshot in, in his terminology, and, and that is the, uh, the new high school with the uh, Miracle League and the ball fields and the fishing pier uh, on t North 10th Street. I will tell you that has been a tremendous joint partnership in terms of uh, buying the land together, laying this out together, working together to understand what that looks like. And beyond our partnership with the schools, we've partnered with West Des Moines schools, Dallas County, uh, Dallas Center Grimes schools, et cetera, in order to make sure that they can use those facilities and that it's a regional, regional facility for all of our kids. Um, I think, you know, we, we touched briefly, Ben touched briefly on um, what, our, what our school administration has gone through in the last few years, and that's, that's hard to forget, but I think now it's, it, it comes back to the relationships. It comes back to now it's kind of the city and the chamber's job to, to kind of help give the school district a little lift maybe, because without the Waukee School District being successful, Waukee is not gonna be as successful. Um, that's why most people move here. Um, my relationship, I've had, we've had an amazing relationship with, with our boys. We have sixth grader and 10th grader, and um, we have one graduating, will graduate from each high school because our neighborhood changed feeders. So I like to think that we're just gonna, we're trying out all the schools, which, <laughs> but, but our administrators and our teachers are, are just incredible. And the city, has to strategically plan with the school district. Um, my husband and I have have really um, been in communication with the administration regarding school safety and what the what those parameters are. And 
the school district recently released a video that our police department put together and on, on what to do in an active shooter situation or emergency like that. And I think those strategic partnerships are critical and very important and we have to have those. So it's, I think it, it can only, it, it's great. It can only get better. It can always get better. Uh, I would like to say that my relationship with the uh, Waukee School District is that I didn't move from here the second time when I built my house. So, <laughs> Good. so um, I have a son. He's 15. He goes to the high school over here. So, and while growing up, he's been actually also learning new things. He's into robotics. He's into swimming. He's into doing a lot of things. And when I see the school district, that plays an integral part of a community. A growing community needs to have a really good school district. Otherwise, you'll see parents leaving the school district and the city. If we do not plan it strategically enough, if we do not give the necessary funding, if we do not give the necessary opportunities for our kids to learn and to become better, we will not have the city any longer. It'll be one of those dying cities when there's nobody wants to come in it. So what does the relationship between a council and the city is going to be? Is that we have to partner with them and see how we can strategically grow, not just for the sake of growing, that we have a school here, a school there, busing kids around from left to right. We need to strategically think and how we can partner with our school district and see how we can improve on it. So we are right now in a second high school, and I'm hearing that we are also started to planning our third high school. We have not yet built our second. How are we planning for the third? We need to think about some of those things and start working towards it and see how best we can achieve something without just creating multiple schools. So, thank you. My relationship with the school system, there we go. My relationship with the school system, uh, my oldest daughter is 28. She moved here when she was a freshman. My youngest daughter is a freshman in college and she's been here since preschool. Um, for those 13 years, I volunteered at the schools. I was an assistant uh, teacher for the special needs classes. I have worked in the administrative building the school is just I I could just go on way past my time talking about how wonderful the school was and right before this meeting I was at a meeting with Jim Miller did a presentation um, the Betterment Foundation about the the Miracle League Park and the new high school and I didn't realize until that meeting how closely the city and the school had to work together because we have the city wanting the Miracle Leagues and, and these all-inclusive parks, and we've got the schools with their brand new high school. So they came together and worked together to acquire the land so that we could do this all together. And I tell you, this, this all-inclusive um, park with the fishing mm -hmm. pier, Courtney, you were there, it, it's mm -hmm. tremendous. And so I was glad to be there to understand how the school and the city have worked together in the past and how we can continue to team with them for better things in the future. Let me wrap up with just a couple of quick comments. Um, I want all of you who have had any concerns about in the past about the direction of our school district to feel great about where we are going now. The ship has turned. We are going in the right direction. We have some exceptional leadership in Dr. Brad Buck. And I hope whenever you have a chance to bump into him, you'll stick your hand out and say hi. Uh, he is exactly what we needed. and I'm very excited about where we're going. There are 54 different languages spoken in our school district. As we become bigger, we have bigger issues to address. We have a higher rate, our, our, our rate of free, induced, free and reduced lunch is beginning to creep up. We need to make sure that our kids get the mental health services that they need. There are food insecurity issues that we need to address. And we get 600 new kids to this district every year at a reimbursement rate from the state of about $6,000 per student. Multiply that times, uh, times 600, we end up $3.6 million in the hole before we even get out of the gate. We're not getting any sympathy from the state for that because there are a lot of school districts in this state that would love to be in our position. Our children have incredible opportunities here and we are truly blessed 
but we need to make sure that we're keeping an eye out for the things that follow this kind of growth. Oh, and plug, can I plug the upcam, upcoming uh, candidates for them? We have some incredibly good school uh, board candidates this year. You, you might see me hosting that one, too. Good. <laughs> when, when, when is it? The 17th. 17th at, at the uh, Theater Arts Building. Uh, I'm going to ask one more quick question, try to pair it to 30 seconds, and then we'll do some abbreviated closing statements if that's everybody, if that's all right with everybody. So um, relationships, the city of Waukee has uh, continued to be one of the fastest growing from residential and businesses that we've talked about right now. Um, in conjunction, conjunction with the chamber and the city's excellent partnership um, over a number of years now, um, what is one thing that the chamber, s supporting the business side of things, can do to continue to support the city in, in the vision of that? So one thing, 30 seconds quick. I think um, joint thought in terms of, I know that the issue that I just mentioned, where businesses have had to delay opening and have struggled to find that next, that next group of employees, some joint thought around how we can best partner to help address that need would be really helpful continuing to work together and and to build upon those relationships and um, communicate more I mean that's exactly communicate and um, and work together as, as one because we are collaboration and being open and honest reaching out to the council members with your concerns so that they can be addressed and we can work as a team to address them. That's it. I'm going to say it too. We, we, we need to work together to make sure that we're continuing to attract businesses and not just the small restaurants or nail salons, but we do need those. But big businesses like Holmes Murphy and Fleet Farm, how can we work together with the chamber to make sure that we are marketing ourselves to continue getting those businesses that are going to bring more job opportunities? Ditto, 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 and ditto, and we are truly blessed to have an organization like our Chamber of Commerce who leads uh, the way we get things done in this community. We have some fantastic leaders, and we're so blessed to have them when a lot of other chambers in the area, well, everywhere, struggle to survive. Ours continues to grow under fantastic leadership. Okay. Um, I, I think what I'd, I'd like to see the uh, Chamber work with the city a little bit more and then developers to... Uh, in, in the business, in the, in the chamber, to kind of increase the uh, uh, kind of spirit of uh, entrepreneurship in Waukee. You know, we, we see that in, in other cities, you know, working with the Des Moines Partnership and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's some opportunity there, maybe working with, you know, students at the Apex Building and some of the local businesses uh, to uh, go in that direction. Thank you guys for your answer, and thank you for paying attention to the time and humoring me on that. <laughs> uh, again, some, some maybe some quick closing comments as we work around here. Oh, I just went first. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, happy, to, I'm happy to go first. Um, so as I was thinking about this, I realized, you know, since we don't have an incumbent in this election, it can be really challenging to know how is somebody going to shape up in a role. Just like we know you don't learn your job in a classroom, you don't learn a new role going to meetings either. And so, um, so as I looked at it, I really thought about a statement that I heard from one of the many, many presidential candidates that are out there right now. He said, um, don't ask me what I'm going to do, ask me what I've already done. And I like that so much I'm going to steal it, so I'll, I'll give him credit later if anybody wants to know. But um, in my case, it's don't ask me about what kind of leader I'm going to be, ask me what kind of leader I've already been. I have been a leader in, in across geographies businesses, industries, nonprofits, public entities. I've developed relationships that go across boundaries to deliver joint growth opportunities to help uh, communities kind of find creative solutions to problems. And I've used this experience already here in Waukee in a number of ways, and that's what I will continue to do. Okay, I, I'm gonna close with um, a simple comparison. We. We're reminded of every year during our yearly strategic planning session. It's the difference between governance versus politics. Um, to state it simply, politics is getting elected or reelected. Governance is serving the community. Politics is making promises. It's responding to the current crisis. It's taking personal credit and receiving personal recognition. 
Governance, however, is shaping the city's future. It's taking responsibility and it's creating community benefits and value. My philosophy is to govern and to do so as a team. I'll do so fairly and without prejudice. And to the new members, new candidates running for office, I urge you to respect each other, to align as advocates for the community, to hold each other accountable. Um, being elect elected by my community is one of the most humbling things I could ever experience. Um, if you elect me, you can expect integrity, honesty, and trust. And I have the time, I have the dedication, and I'm eager to serve. I believe in the leadership style of as a servant leader. So that is what I believe in. I practice agile in my IT industry world as well, and I've been training people to do that. I think that is the right thing to do. So I'm here for you. Voting me would help us achieve the next growth that we are looking for in the walkie, uh, the future that we want our kids to have. So uh, the only thing that I would say is have an open mind. Yes, we have a lot of experience over here on this side of the council and mayor or candidates over here, but I'm coming from outside in. I would like to shine the light and be very open, honest, and receptive to ideas. Thank you. Well, it's been pretty evident from all of us up here that we love this town and, and we definitely want the best for Waukee. I want to see the community continue to grow, but I also want to preserve the history that, that's made it so special. As a council member, I promise to serve Waukee to the best of my ability. I'll be understanding, proactive, respectful, and open. And I'm going to listen to both sides of a situation and then form my own opinion. If elected, I'm going to continue to meet with the residents, not just during my campaign, but continue to be the voice of the residents to the city council. I'm going to continue working on fair housing, supporting public safety, and improving the communication between the city administration and the city and the Waukee residents. I'm asking you for your vote because I have the proven ability to work with the community members, our businesses, our nonprofit organizations, and our city staff. I'm not asking you to vote for me because you're my neighbor or you're my friend. But if you're a family member, you, yeah, I'm sorry, you have to. <laughs> Um, first of all, I'll uh, promise not to pass any laws that are unnecessary. I, I think that the less government's a good thing. I think that anyone who wants to live in Waukee should be able to afford to do so. I, that's a thing we didn't get to address tonight that's been a, a big topic in our community lately. And please know that we're all interested in doing that and that while that, while we know that's important, it, it takes a while to get that done, but we're working on it. Lastly, I. Lori and I have always maintained that there was no room for partisan politics in city government, and I think you saw that in the integrity of these people tonight. I think any one of these folks would be a great candidate for city council. Those of us who may not move forward, I hope that they'll continue to serve in other capacities because there are so many fantastic opportunities for everyone to serve in this town, including those of you in the audience tonight. Please step forward and serve. Thank you. Okay. I. Um I'm glad I'm not the only one that brought notes, um, but uh, I, I have a conclusion here I was going to read, but, uh, you know, I, I'm going to not read it. Um, well, I'm going to be part of it, but uh, the, 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 one of the big things that I've, you know, mentioned several times is that, you know, I have the time to dedicate to this position, um, you know, and uh, I, I'm, I think I'm very approachable, um, you know, so with that aside, I, I was, uh, wish we had a little more, bit more time. so. Uh, to get into some specifics of, of you know, some of the things I, I want to do and, and want to look at. Um, so I can run out of time here again, but uh, just want to say, you know, come find me. I, I want to hear what you have to say. Um, hit me up on Facebook uh, or benforwalkie.com. You can contact me there. And I want to listen and uh, I want to uh, serve. So thank you.
Thanks, <clears throat> thanks everybody. We did run short on time. We did not get to lo ask a lot of questions, but as Mr. Lyons pointed out earlier, this is a good thing. We've got a lot of people up here that are really active and want to be active in our community, so that's that's great. Uh, on, on, in closing, from my standpoint, just on behalf of the Waukee Area Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank all of the candidates and de you know dedicating some of their time to spend with everybody here tonight. And I'd like to say the same thing, to you guys. Thank you for coming, participating actively in our community. So thank you guys, and everyone have a good night. Thank you.